Howdy folks, welcome back to another episode of Bjorn's Mighty Thoughts, and today I have for you X, uh, WXWC4 Wrestling. Um, this They just did an event locally where I live. Figured what the hell, it was like 10 bucks, took my son, checked it out. Um, the show was quite enjoyable, I'm going to get to that here in a bit, but I figured I'd talk a little bit about it. It is an independent wrestling promotion. Um... They're not part of the WWE. They're not part of Global Force Wrestling, anything like that. Like I said, they're completely independent. Uh, They actually have a headquarters set up here in Allentown, PA, and they have another headquarters actually in Florida. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about it, how I felt about it. Uh, Most of the wrestlers looked pretty good for being an independent promotion you know nothing nothing spectacular you know wasn't like watching wwe or anything like that um most of the gimmicks were pretty good could get into uh the matches you could tell pretty early in the matches who was the heel who was the baby face i felt that was actually quite enjoyable because for the most part i guess they're they are televised on uh blast tv i guess you can get it through roku Um, but really you didn't know, you didn't know who the heel and who the baby face was, um, until they rang the bell and they quickly, quickly established who was the heel, who was the baby face. I felt that was kind of a nice breath of fresh air. Uh, they did things to fire up the crowd, the heels and the baby faces both, which was quite cool. Uh, that's kind of a technique that the, uh, the WWE has kind of lacked in the last few years. Um, you know, wrestling's really dropped off in the you know past decade or so, and um, yeah, so yeah, that was kind of one of those forgotten techniques I, I felt, and they did a pretty good job on that. Uh, the announcer and the referee was very audible, which was good. Um, you could always hear the referee, even though the referee was never wearing a microphone. Um, Now we're going to get to the bad sides about how I felt about it. The production honestly looked like shit. The rain didn't really look like it was the best. Uh, There was no rain stairs whatsoever. Uh, The sound system really wasn't the best either. The run width. um, uh, There was Kai's there with cameras. They weren't very good cameras. Uh, Pardon me one moment. Now, all that being said, I can kind of we can kind of let that one slide. It was it was a local spot show, more or less in in the parking lot of a fire hall. Um, I, I think it was kind of one of those things. They it was a road show. They were just kind of working with what they have. They don't necessarily have the best equipment. They don't necessarily have the best production value. Um. And like I said, it was a road show. Uh, I'd be interested to see what the production value is of a house show. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, some of the gimmicks just look like the shits. Um, maybe the people didn't understand their, the people that run their gimmicks. They don't know how to exploit their gimmicks very well yet, which that could come down to a raw experience thing. They just don't have that raw experience. And some of the wrestlers honestly need more rain time. I mean, some of the wrestlers, most of the wrestlers looked decent. Some of them looked amazing. And then there was a few there that just looked like the shits that uh, they shouldn't be really presented in any show, even if it's just going to be some local little thing in a parking lot. Um, I I think, I don't want to say that necessarily brings my bad name, but some of their upcomers, they got to work with more on rain time and experience. You know, that's... That's not necessarily the promotion. That's actually more the individual, more than anything else. Same way with gimmicks. Um, I can't say anything really bad about the promotion, I feel, uh, looking at them up front. Um, they do have a show coming up, uh, I guess. Uh, from what I understand, reading online, Samu actually runs the uh, runs the organization uh, you might recognize that name. He used to be a WWE wrestler. Uh, actually, you can see here in the photo, you got Gene Snitsky there. Um, he used to be a WWE wrestler, and now he's partial. From what I understand, he's actually supposed to be retired from wrestling. 
uh, reading online, but it looks like he might be doing independent spot shows, which I can talk a little bit about that. Gene Snitsky was there. Yeah, he didn't really wrestle. He interfered with the match. Uh, I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, the match, honestly, the match looked like the shits. He had some guy, he weighed about 160 pounds soaking wet going up against a guy who weighs about 350 pounds, maybe even more. He's a pretty big dude. He's even bigger than I am, and I'm a big dude myself. Um, and it, it looked like a, it looked like a fly with a BB gun going after a freight train. It just, it didn't, it did not work out. It wasn't very good. I mean, I've seen Rey Mysterio Jr. go after some, some pretty big guys. I've seen, you know, uh, I've seen Shawn Michaels go after some big guys too, but those, those guys are different. They've, they've been in the business for a long time. They know how to sell. They know how to work. Although not like, uh, not like, not like Shawn Michaels ever did a work for anybody. But, uh, so that being said, you know, the, the match, the match itself didn't look the best. It, it, had, it was no fault of either wrestler. You just had like this big monster go after this just tiny little guy and just he didn't really do much. And and Snitsky came out and interrupted the match. He went after the big monster, which was kind of hilarious because you got Gene Snitsky, who's I don't quite remember how tall he is. He's probably like six foot five. And there's uh yeah, six foot five and he's about three hundred and fifty pounds of rock muscle. And then you got this other guy, he's you know, he's about 350 pounds himself, but he's like six foot two. And Snitsky just looks so much better against this other guy. Um, and things of that nature. One thing I want to talk about too, and I didn't really touch base on the good side of things. Um, and I felt it was actually great was the rain was very audible. And what I mean by that is, is when people take a bump, you could hear the bump. Um, the rain actually gave extra sound to the bump. Especially when you had big guys taking bumps. Um, that was very cool. They had a couple tag team matches there. Which one kind of confused me. So they had, at the beginning of the card, they had a singles match, which got interrupted. Uh, basically, you had, it, it was more like a three-way match the way it was going. That ended up being a tag team match with, with the, the, the one baby face. And then it was the champion who's also a baby face against these two heels. It didn't last long. It was just utter chaos, uh, but it was it was actually dr pretty directed chaos. Um, there was a couple things there that the heel did. I, if I was a booker, I would look at the he or the babyface, the champion. A couple things there the champ did that I, I would actually look at and be like, don't do that again or just do it once and be done with it. Don't do it multiple times. Um, but they did a lot of, the heels did great on getting heat when they needed to get heat. The, the the baby faces did really good getting comebacks when they needed to get comebacks. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot of wrestlers there. Most of the wrestlers, it's like, you know, a couple more years. Uh, you just need a couple more years. There's a couple wrestlers there where it's like, wow, you know, another like five more years in the rain and, and some more training. I could see where you could end up being with like Global Force Wrestling or some other bigger promotion. Uh, maybe even WWE, but there you go. That's what I felt about. It. There was no hokey bullshit, no dick spots, no fucking, no, uh, no wrestling blow up dolls, which was, which was a great relief. I know that's supposedly a big thing right now. Fuck you, Kenny Omega wrestling a fucking blow up doll. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it was, it was a, a fairly enjoyable show. I felt for the price, um, I would like to see a bigger show, uh, maybe an in-house show at some point, which they have one coming up. I'm going to keep an eye out for it. Maybe check that out. So there might be more videos about uh, WXWC4 Wrestling here in the future. We will see. But anyway, folks, so that's that's my take about this independent wrestling promotion and a little talk about wrestling in general. So anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you on the next one.